Hi, welcome to the Louie File. Today I want to talk with you for a moment about what apparently, as of late in my own uh, little circle, has become a very controversial issue and a, uh, maybe a misunderstood, misinterpreted, I don't know, verse, but it's a familiar verse, probably, if you're a Christian, have been for very long. It's 1 John 1 9. Let me just read this. It's a New American Standard Bible, is what I use. And it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right. There is a somewhat of a disturbance, I might say. I don't know. I guess what I want to do is I just want to clarify what this is saying. What is this really saying? It's saying if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins. All right, let's do some word definitions real quick. The word profess uh, basically means to say or to declare, right? The word confess means, the word co, confess, C-O, confess, means to say with, or in other words, agree with. So, what this verse is saying is, is that if we Confess, if we agree with God about our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. All right, so what this isn't really saying, it really, it isn't saying if we go to God and ask Him to forgive us, as if, if let me put it this way, Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed His blood, was buried and raised back, for the forgiveness of our sin. John the Baptist pointed at him and declared, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So when Jesus died on the cross and was buried and raised back, when he, in his death, in the shedding of his blood, there was reconciliation. In the resurrection, and then subsequently a little later, the ascension, he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell us, and that means the life of God, the life of Christ, the Holy Spirit now lives in us and operates through us. We're forgiven people. It's a done deal. The blood is, is why God forgives us. In 2 Corinthians 5, it tells us that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And it goes on to say that, that we have been given this ministry of reconciliation. And it's as though God is making his appeal in us, through us, be ye reconciled. So that's the plan. So what I want you to see is, is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not, not counting or imputing their trespasses or sins against them. So... 1 John 1, 9 is telling us if we confess, so if we agree with God about any sin that might be in our life, then he's faithful to cleanse us. He, he, he will forgive us. He does not forgive us because we ask him for forgiveness. He forgives us because the bloodshed, the death, the burial and resurrection, the forgiveness is a once for all, all-inclusive covering and removal of our sin. Removal. An amazing, amazing thing. This is what's called good news. That's why the gospel message is good news. It's not kind of good. It's not better than some old news. It's not semi-good. It is unbelievably good. <laughs> All right, so here's the big question. What happens then when a Christian commits a sin? When, when, when we know we have broken God's law or some command that he has given us as an individual, you know, it's... He's spoken something into our spirit and told us to stay away from something. So I just, I just come up, I'll just put it like this. As a Christian, I'm walking along through life and I start feeling pulled towards something that I know is not right for me. Uh, either it's an explicit command in scripture or it's something that God has shown me in my own personal life that I, I need to stay away from. And here I am being pulled or drawn toward it. Now that's what the Bible calls temptation. So there's no condemnation, there's no guilt in that. Now, if I go from being pulled to actually engaging, now when I'm starting to engage in that forbidden behavior or thing, now I have committed a sin. So what do I do? So what do I do, Louie? Don't I have to ask God to forgive me? Well, 
not really. What what we're doing here, I'm trying to, I'm, it's nitpicking. <laughs> I don't want to be a nitpicker, but th this is a very important nitpicking situation. It's not that we go to God and ask him to forgive us as though maybe he won't, right? That, that would be saying that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection didn't do the job, wouldn't it? If I have to go to him as if he won't. So what I'm doing is I'm agreeing with him. So now I've gotten caught over into this sin, this lust or this coveting or whatever it is that has taken me over that I've allowed myself to get into. So rather than saying, God, will you forgive me? As a Christian, what I do is I say, thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness. Thank you, God, that I am not that person anymore. Thank you that you have transformed me into a new creature in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that you have dealt with all of this stuff. Thank you. And then I continue to walk. You know, in 1 John 1, 7, it tells us this. It says, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. <laughs> so we walk in the light and the blood does the work. We walk in openness. We say with God, if there's a sin in our life, we agree with him. And we say, that was sin. And then we just move, we just continue into the light. So the way I have a picture in my head, is like a Christian is walking in the light as he is in the light. We're in fellowship one with another. We're just, we're just, we're just enjoying our life uh, in peace and love and joy with one another. It's, it's, the Christians call it a relationship with Jesus Christ. Temptation is well, all of a sudden we're we're looking all over towards something that isn't on the path of light, and we're we're looking over into some murky area, some gray area, or even very dark area, and we start to veer. Well, as soon as we veer and the and we start to recognize we're veering, we go, "Oh Lord, thank you for showing me that. I agree with you. That's darkness. That is not of you." And we move back over into the path of the light. And we say, thank you, Lord. And we just continue on. We walk in the light and his blood just deals with it, takes care of it. It's already taken care of it, really, in that sense. I hope this uh, clarifies for you what I'm getting at here. As a new creature in Christ, I confess, I say with, I agree with God when I get over into something that is forbidden but I don't have to ask for forgiveness. I recognize that forgiveness is already made available because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a marvelous thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to know that our sins have been dealt with forever. Hebrews 10, 14. Let me read that for you. Hebrews 10, 14 is an incredible verse that people just really have a hard time with, but it says, Hebrews 10, 14, For by one offering... He has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. It's a done deal, folks. By one sacrifice, he has dealt with it. And his sacrifice is enough. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time on The Louis File. See you later.